I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join together and sing our gathering song, which is, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? Hymn 659.
a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts, and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our reading. Supper, 
Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the people's feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. And he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, what are, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash, except for his feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For in this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? He called, you call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. If so, if I, the Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash the feet of one another. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify in him himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the things that we hear with Jesus this night, uh, this is right prior to when he goes out and is crucified, he's captured and arrested and crucified the next day, we hear of this word, this calling to do something, to love one another. And this gift that is so confusing to his disciples come as one not where they wash Jesus' feet, but in turn Jesus actually humbles himself, taking the form of somebody like a slave to them and washing their feet. This is one of the things that we hear that God continues to come to us and continues to give us over. See, we have received all that Jesus is because he has become a servant so that we could have all of him. That we could actually have all of who Christ is so that we could be able to actually know then who we are. See, in Jesus' death and resurrection that comes, one of the things that continues to bind us to one another is this thing that God has done for us. That in this, in Christ coming to us, he doesn't tell us that we should owe him everything. Instead, he actually turns around, and even with his disciples, he tells them to actually, you have now received my love, go and love one another. Do exactly as I have done, because we are stepping into something that's brand new. See, God doesn't need our good works, our neighbors do. Those who continue to be going out and coming in, 
Those who are in the midst of grief and sorrow, of loss, and the aches and pains of illness, the heartache of relationship, we enter into being one who comes and is humble. And we think that we're doing this just because we are so good at it. One of the things that we hear and understand, because of what Christ has done, this comes along with the faith that we have received as well. The gift of faith continues to be the one that actually makes us into who we are, as those who are freed and forgiven, as those who are been bowed down to and feet washed. We are continuing to be those who are sent out to a world that needs us. That in faith, not because of our might, that we do these things. In faith, because of who God has made us to be in Jesus' death and resurrection, that we continue to be the one who believes and trusts. The one who is able to do the things that we do, not because we see it as an obligation or see our neighbor as the tool in order to gain God's grace. We do so because we have that example of what Christ has done for us, of emptying himself of actually stepping into human flesh and blood and being somebody who takes the form of a servant to come to us in the time of our need. And then saying to us, go and do likewise. In this gift of faith that we have received, this is faith active in love. This is how we continue to live out of who we've been and who we've become in order to actually be with our neighbor, to be with the ones who are truly sent into the world to be with, to come alongside and to hear. This love that Christ talks about isn't one that we logically think about each and every step, but as often is exhibited through friends, through loved ones, through strangers, who continue to show this self-givingness to be able to give themselves for the sake of the other, a spontaneousness, an overflowing love for the world because we know where this comes from. We have first received this in Christ, and we continue to be those who go and do likewise, loving our neighbor as ourselves. To do what we are called to do in loving one another through this faith that God continues to empower you to do. For you to go out. For you to actually bend down and stoop and become a servant to your neighbor. Because they need you. One another. We need one another within this to understand that this gift continues to go out. This gift that we hear in this of loving one another is embodied within what the fifth graders are going to be receiving tonight. Some of them have also already received this gift because of the promise of simply hearing and understanding that by faith, the thing that is necessary in receiving Holy Communion is believing the words. This is my body given for you. This is my blood given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Just simply hearing and trusting and receiving this through that same gift of faith that we understand. And by receiving that, we are brought to that newness in this day. To continue to go out and love one another as Christ has first loved you. Let us now continue with our hymn of this day. Our hymn of this day is By Your Hand You Feed Your People, hymn 469.
bottom of page 126. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and then seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in Jesus, who gave his life for the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the power and lift up any who are marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service to love our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. God, whose great commandment is love, guide all who govern by this principle of love. Transform unjust human systems that oppress some may gain of others. Restore communities and places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. God, of who who was betrayed, comforts people everywhere, who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they knew and trusted. Heal the bodies, minds, and hearts of the victims of exploitation. Help all who are in pain to know that you are near them. Lord, in your mercy. God, who sits at the table with us, grants the joy of your presence to people celebrating First Communion this day, and all who share this meal, strengthen communities of faith and grace and courage. Lord, in your mercy. God, who brings life out of death, we pray for the thanks and with thanks for the lives of those who have joined in the communion of saints. In our holy meal, connect us with the faithful who have gone before us, and nourish us as your people living today. Lord, in your mercy. We pray to you, O God, in the name of the one who endured the cross. Forgive our sins and feed us at this table. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us now receive an offering for the care and concern of the ministries of this congregation, for this community which are part of the world for which we've been sent out. I invite you to please stand as you're able. As we sing together, everybody's got something to offer.
found on page 190. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gathered your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
You may now go in peace.